Hi, my name is Chris, and today I want to show you how you can use your GoPro Hero 8, 7, or Max, as I have right here, to use it as a secondary camera in your OBS live stream with audio and video streaming from your room as a secondary camera or as some other setup that you may have. For that, we are going to use all free software OBS as well as a local RTMP server. And I'm going to show you how you can set it all up so that it works. The use cases for multiple camera angles are endless. You can have a top-down camera showing how you are working on a desk, maybe showing how your fingers move while you're doing a gameplay or similar things. Now, not everybody has the money to invest in multiple high-end DSLR or mirrorless cameras, like for example, the camera that I'm using for my live streaming is the Canon EOS R with a 35mm 1.8 lens, but that setup costs like two and a half, three thousand US dollars. So that's not really something that everybody can afford twice or even just once. So maybe you have a GoPro Hero 7, 8 or Max lying around, and then you can actually use the live streaming capabilities of this camera to stream to a local so-called RTMP server and then use that as a source in your OBS setup. One of the cavities to keep in mind and probably the major one here is that there is a delay between the camera sending the image and OBS receiving it, displaying it and rendering it into the stream. This is because it is a wireless connection so there are no cables and RTMP just by default always has some kind of a delay which is also based on the buffer setting. And I'm going to show you how you can minimize that. However, there's always going to be around one second of a delay between the two. Now I want to give you a couple of the details of what this is actually doing and what it is capable of. With the GoPro Max that I have here, the live streaming resolution is changeable between 720p as well as 1080p and the frame rate is going to be 30 frames per second. The field of view is always going to be wide. However, you can actually change the camera so you can change which camera is being used, but you have to do that right before you start live streaming. Once you are live streaming, you either have to restart the live stream to actually switch between the two cameras or you just have to use whatever camera you already selected. This may be different for the Hero 8 or 7. However, I do not have these here for testing. I just know that they also have the live streaming capabilities and at least 1080p with 30 frames per second should work just fine. And this is also something that probably is going to work perfectly well for anyone who wants to start using this because most people either stream at 720p or 1080p and that's perfectly okay. Another thing about the GoPro Max is that despite being a 360 camera, the live streaming capabilities are only able to live stream in hero mode and not in 360 mode. That is not something that this camera supports at the time of recording this video. It may be a future update, but I don't necessarily think so. But if you want that, you can of course send a support request to GoPro and contact them and tell them about that request and that feature that we all want. Another thing that is missing in live streaming mode with the GoPro Max is that the horizon leveling is not working. So usually if you're shooting in hero mode and you are turning the horizon leveling on and you're turning your camera sideways, it does not matter. The frame does not change and it just usually displays everything like normal. This is not something that works in live streaming mode and you're just going to have to keep your camera level. There's actually one last detail that I want to mention before actually starting into the tutorial part where I show you how you can set all of this up yourself. And that is that the camera cannot be charged by USB cable while you are already live streaming. There is a little bit of a workaround that can make this, make this work. However, it's a strange one. Basically, you have to start live streaming with a battery and then you can plug in the USB-C power and then you can actually remove the battery from the GoPro. And with that, you have a camera that is powered by USB and it's just going to continue live streaming. I have tested this for about 10 minutes and now I actually have recorded with the camera in live streaming mode and I actually have tested hot swapping. So having the camera be live streaming while I use it and then opening the battery door, plugging in a USB cable, removing the battery after a few seconds and the camera keeps working. Then I place the battery back into the camera, remove the USB cord and started using it as well. And the live stream never really got interrupted. But again, you have to have a battery inside the camera because for some reason, it does not actually find a Wi-Fi connection to do the live streaming if there is no battery inside. But you can remove the battery 
once you have started the live stream and you also have plugged in a USB-C cord to charge it and to run it. But now let's go into the tutorial part and I'm going to show you how you can set all of this up on a Mac or a Windows computer and it's all with software that is free to use. First of all, of course, you need OBS Studio to actually start using the camera inside of that for live streaming. This is a software that I recommend for live streaming to YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and even Instagram. If you wanna check out the video that I made about that, there's going to be a link in the description below. Now, this is something that you can set up very easily. You just download the package for your computer, whether it's Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, it doesn't really matter. It's really easy to install. And I'm going to just jump over that step and you can figure that out. Now, what you will need are a couple of ways of actually having the camera stream to your computer, but it's of course also possible to stream to a different location online already. For example, you could straight away stream to Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, or whatever other platform, either by using the built-in functionality in the GoPro app, or by having the RTMP stream URL as well as your stream key and plugging those details into the camera. But what we are trying to do is set this all up that it's in a local area network that you can actually record the camera as well as stream the camera through OBS inside of your local network and then it all goes out from there to Twitch, to Restream or to YouTube or whatever. So what you need is a RTMP server on your computer. What I'm not going to cover is Windows here or Linux because I am a Mac user and I'm specifically showing you the way on Mac. However, what you can see on the screen here is actually a tutorial that someone wrote for Windows users. So if you are on Windows, I will have a link in the description that will give you a tutorial on a RTMP server setup that you can use on your computer. Now jumping over to the software that I recommend for Mac OS users, and that is called Mac Local RTMP Server. Here, this is actually a very simple software that just lives in your menu bar at the top right here. And there you can see a very simple, sleek and minimal interface. And you can actually just download this software right here on this page, the releases, and there I would recommend the DMG version because the Mac zip file actually has had a couple of problems with different users. So downloading the DMG file and then opening it and then you will just find a regular file in there, drag that over to your applications folder as you always do and then double click it to start or right click and hit the open menu point. Once you have installed and opened that application, you actually have a little icon right at the top of your menu bar. And once you click that, you can see no live streams currently, as well as a RTMP URL and a stream key. There's also this little off button, which actually quits the application and completely shuts it down. Now, there is something about these two things. There's the RTMP stream URL, and then you have the stream key. These two combined with a slash in the middle are becoming your stream URL that you will enter into the app on your phone. However, this is actually the URL that only works for local streaming. So the 127001 is actually just your uh, computer locally. So this does not work with your GoPro because your GoPro is not local to your computer. So you actually have to figure out your IP address of your computer yourself. Now, what you can do to do that is you go into the system preferences. There we go to network. And then you select whichever network you are using. In my case, it's a Wi-Fi. And then you can see this line right here. And there you can see the IP address of this computer is 192.168.0.10. And that is actually what we're going to use instead of the 127001. So you have to keep that in mind because with the just 127001, it's not going to work. Now to start live streaming, we actually have to power up the GoPro and then we also open the app on the phone. Now with my phone open and the GoPro app started, so we go to control your GoPro. Once that is open, we're actually going to jump over to the live setup. And then down here, you click, instead of the Facebook or YouTube, you actually click the RTMP part. Then you go to set up live. And once that actually started loading, you will have a couple of options. One is which Wi-Fi connection you wanna use or if you want to use a hotspot connection. So you actually could live stream when you're out and about in nature. 
So you could do that, but we're going to do again the live stream to this local RTMP server. So we have the Wi Fi network connected. And then inside the RTMP URL area, we are going to write RTMP colon slash slash and then 192.168.0.10 slash live slash. And the interesting part about the software that we downloaded is actually that the part behind the slash live is actually uh, just needs to be unique in your network for this computer. So you could write something like GoPro max in my case. Then we choose the resolution. And as you can see, we can do 1080p, 720, as well as 480. And then you can make a choice between whether or not you want to save a copy to your SD card or not. I'm just going to leave that off and then set up live stream. Then you're going to see this screen. It's not really a big deal. And you go live and I just ran into a couple of problems here with the GoPro not wanting to take the settings. I have had this experience a couple of times. Generally, it helps to just restart the GoPro and do the whole process again. So I'm just now going to enter the URL again, select 1080p, set up live stream, go live. Now you can see that the live stream actually started and the interface on the computer also changed. And now it actually displays that the name of the stream is GoPro Max. There are zero clients connected and this will actually change once we have our OBS connected. Traffic is 7.78 megabytes and it's going up. So you see how much data the GoPro actually sends to your computer. The audio, the video codec, the zero FPS is not really true, but it's something that uh, they try to display, but it's not really possible here in this case. And then you have this here, the URL that you're going to use in OBS. So we can click to copy this, close that, and then we're going to open OBS, we're going to add a new media type. In this case, we're going with media source. You can also use VLC video source. However, I have found that that's not really as reliable as using media source here. So using media source, we can call this GoPro Max, for example. And then here we click local file because it's not a local file. Restart playback when source becomes available. Yep, that makes sense. We are reducing the network buffer because the more you buffer, the more the delay is going to be. With one megabyte and 1080p, it's about one second. If you do two megabytes with a 1080p connection, it's actually about two seconds. So that's down to one megabyte. It's the least that you can set it at. And with input, we are going to paste what we just copied. So the RTMP colon slash slash 127001 slash live slash GoPro Max. Input format empty, show nothing when playback ends. It's also a good idea. So it's actually transparent when there is nothing to show. And then we click OK. And what you will see is that we immediately get the image that we now have on here, also on the screen. So the GoPro just became a secondary camera for me here to use. And you can see there is a slight delay between the two. However, that's something that you'll have to work with or you have to set up the whole audio chain of things to also match with that. One thing to note though is if you only use the GoPro Hero Max as a source, the audio from the source is actually going to be in sync with the video feed. So the audio from the GoPro is going to be synchronized to its own video. And that's a good thing because otherwise it would be a mess. However, using this camera and for example, an external microphone or a USB microphone together in a live stream, you have to really figure out that delay and then go to the audio settings here advanced audio properties. And for your USB microphone, for example, you'll have to set the sync offset to either something around 1000, probably maybe 900, and then go from there, test it out, see how it goes. Now, what we do not have as a possibility is that I cannot change which camera is actually filming with the GoPro Max here. I was able to do that right before starting to live stream, but I'm not able to change between the two lenses once I am live streaming. And as I mentioned before, now if I go vertical, for example, it is actually not doing the horizon leveling because as mentioned before, that is not a feature the GoPro Max supports in live streaming mode. And for the GoPro Hero 8 or 7, that's already a no-go because it is not in the feature set of the camera at all. 
And as I've mentioned in the beginning, you can actually keep live streaming. So the camera is right now live streaming. You can open the battery compartment. You can plug in the camera. And then you can actually remove the battery, for example, to plug in a new one or keep it in there like this and it will continue live streaming for quite a long time. As I've mentioned, I have tested this for 30 minutes, something like that, and it kept working flawlessly. Now, if you put in the battery back in, you can wait a moment and then remove the uh, USB plug and close the battery compartment again. And like this, you would hot swap your batteries while you are live streaming and yeah, that's just how it works. And the sad thing is that it does not work with the battery inside to like charge the battery and also run off the power from the USB plug. But this is a workaround that actually does work. And with all that said, this video comes to a close. If you have any questions about how you can set this up or any issues, please let me know in the comments down below and I may be able to either answer some there or give you a new video with an update. If this video was helpful, please give it a like. That helps a lot so other people can find this information as well. Subscribe for more videos like this as well on other topics and I will see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.